Hey, it's Darius and welcome to part two of this sim on business processes and different types of systems. In part one, we ran through the list from parallel conversion all the way down through executive support system and went over the terminology and what everything means. And then we knocked off the first four numbered items. But I promised you that there was one to 15 in this sim. And by the time you finish this sim, you'll be feeling much better about BEC IT. And then, like all of my I-75ers, when you go to take your exam, you'll have that confidence because you understand and you're ready to anticipate the next question. You didn't just come in with a bunch of memorization and acronyms. So let's pick it up with number five. five. Greer Corp has a system that assists senior management in making non-routine decisions. Not everyday decisions, but decisions nonetheless at the strategic level. So pretty high up such as identifying problems and opportunities while providing information about the activities of competitors. So this is not a system working on its own without humans. This system is helping senior management to make non-routine decisions. So it's not an expert system. Is it a decision support system? Well, it says that it's at the strategic level. And when you see non-routine decisions at the strategic level, opportunities and problems, identifying them while providing information about activities of competitors. This is something that the executives would be doing. This would be an executive support system. So an executive support system helps senior management make non-routine decisions such as identifying problems and opportunities while providing information about things like activities of competitors. At the strategic level, high level decision makers get the information they need to set and monitor progress toward the organization's long term objectives. ESS executive support system is also known as executive information system EIS same thing. What else do we know about executive support system or EIS? They're becoming outdated and quickly being replaced by business intelligence. So let's look at number six. Jump Corp has replaced its older executive support system by providing its executives immediate information about the organization's critical success factors, such as cash balances and sales by region, with a digital dashboard of bar graphs, pie charts, and other formats appropriate for decision making. And that's business intelligence. When you see the executives are given immediate information about critical success factors of the organization, visually displaying information about the organization as bar graphs, pie charts, that's business intelligence. Number seven, Case Corp uses a subsystem of a management information system that is composed of a general ledger financial reporting system and a transaction processing system best suited to solve problems when reporting requirements are structured and well-defined. What are we talking about? This is one we've seen before says we can use the same answer more than once and it's going to be accounting information system. Who had it? Do you have it? Raise your hand. Good. Accounting information system is a subsystem of a management information system. And it's composed of a general ledger financial reporting system and a transaction processing system. And we said AIS is best suited to solve problems when reporting requirements are structured. That means the computer can solve it, do it the same way every time and well defined. Like sales and purchases may be numerous, but if each is processed the same way every time, then an AIS is a good fit. For problem solving where decision making is less structured, then a decision support system would be used. Remember, you use a DSS when part of the problem is structured and part of it is unstructured. Then if that were the case and part of the decision was structured, then you could have the computer handle that part. And if part of it was unstructured, then you'd have the human, the manager, handle the unstructured part. But the AIS, you would use that if the problem was structured and well-defined. So if reporting requirements are structured and well-defined, you use an AIS. If not, then you use a DSS. All right, when a customer of Sinclair Corp, all right, number eight, when a customer of Sinclair Corp places an order the sales department can quickly verify that inventory is sufficient 
And if inventory is not sufficient, production can quickly be notified to manufacture more of the product. Sinclair recently integrated their single function systems of accounting, finance, manufacturing, logistics into an all-inclusive system that attempts to provide entity-wide information and eliminate data redundancy through the use of a central organizational database. And the answer is Enterprise Resource Planning System because that eliminates data redundancy through the use of a central organizational database. Information about an item of data is stored once and all functions have access to it. They tell us in the facts that sales receives an order and it can quickly verify that inventory is sufficient because they have access to the accounting system. And if inventory is not sufficient, production can quickly be notified to manufacture more of the product because everyone in the organization has the ability to access the data quickly and they can notify production to manufacture more of that product because a sale has come in. So these linked subunits in the organization are able to communicate with one another and that's the only way you could accomplish this. The linked subunits not only improve their processes but they also now conform to just one standard because of the ERP system and that allows these back office functions to interact seamlessly. Oracle by the way is a huge provider of ERP systems. Number nine, Suncorp has a database in which fixed asset records remain relatively constant all period until year end when the depreciation entries are made, but sales and purchases are added with much higher frequency to the database, which term refers to the relative frequency with which records in a database are added, deleted, or changed during a specified period. And the answer is volatility or file volatility. It's a term that refers to the relative frequency with which records in a database are added, deleted, or changed during a specified period. And you would expect sales and purchases to be highly volatile compared to fixed asset records, which may only change at period end with depreciation entries unless fixed assets happen to have been acquired or sold. And that's just not as common as sales and purchases in an organization. So you would expect fixed asset volatility to be lower than sales and purchases volatility. Number 10, Calder Inc. has dispersed its data to match business requirements throughout the organization in separate cities and states. As a result, each division accesses only a subset of company data. Calder has found that this speeds up data access and data processing and that new sites can be added to the network without affecting operations at other sites. This describes what? This describes a distributed network or distributed processing. Distributed processing involves the decentralization of processing tasks and data storage and assigning these functions to multiple computers, often in separate locations. In this question, they tell us different cities and states. Well, with distributed processing, data are dispersed to match business requirements. Therefore, data access is much faster than centralized processing. Why? users will use only a subset of company data and it's much faster to access your data if it's just a subset of company data so data access is much faster with a distributed network versus a centralized network and data processing speed improves because you have a distributed processing occurring at multiple sites not just at one centralized site and with a distributed network, new sites can be added without affecting operations at other sites. Now, there are disadvantages that you should know about on a CPA exam for distributed networks and distributed processing. Disadvantages are that data management activities have become more complex because you've got to manage security, backup and recovery at all these different locations. And it's a higher security risk because there's more data entry points to the network that need to be controlled compared to a centralized network, compared to where all data is processed in one room. All right, Fogel Corp's network involves users connecting to the mainframe through simple monitor and keyboard combinations with no ability to process data since Fogel Corp consistently and securely processes all data at a set time at one location. And that's an example of a centralized network or centralized processing where data is processed consistently because processing occurs at a set time at one location. 
The advantages are greater security and consistency of processing, but the disadvantages of centralized processing and centralized networks include slower access to data since all users are logging in to the one large company database, not just their subset of company data. So this way bottlenecks would occur if there's a popular time for everyone to try to access data from the system at the same time. That's the problem with centralized data and a centralized network. Centralized processing, the disadvantage is if you have a single point failure in the system, hey, it's a centralized system. You can't process any data until you get up and running again. Whereas in a distributed system, if you have one failure, if one workstation goes down in a distributed system, its processing and its data storage can be picked up elsewhere by other workstations with minimal disruption. Number 12, Walmart uses data mining to reveal relationships and dependencies or predict outcomes and behaviors such as what products do customers purchase at different times of the year in different parts of the country. And that would be big data or data analytics. That's the analysis of structured, semi-structured and unstructured data that can be mined to reveal relationships and dependencies or predict outcomes and behaviors. Companies use data mining and data analytics to help make better business decisions, such as what products to have on hand in which locations at all different times of the year. See, Walmart determined that certain products sell very well in the fall in the southern part of the country, but they don't sell that well in the Midwest in the fall. And they found that out using big data. The key for them is to have the products at the stores where those shoppers are likely to buy them at that time of year. And for Walmart, big data will take a lot of the guesswork out of the question as to what to have on hand at stores at what part of the country at different seasons of the year. Number 13, on January 1st of the current year, Home Depot changed their payroll system from outsourcing to an in-house payroll system that is integrated with their ERP system. So what they did in the past was maybe they gave it to ADP to do, they outsourced the payroll, but now they want to change it to an in-house payroll system integrated with their ERP system, their enterprise resource planning system. Well, the time to change payroll is not in the middle of the year, but at the very, very beginning of the calendar year because of the way payroll works. You don't want to be switching in the middle of the year. The best time to change systems is right at the very first payroll of the year. So when the calendar year began, they continued to provide ADP the hours worked for the first few weeks while they concurrently ran payroll live with their new in-house system. What's that an example of? That's parallel conversion. Because with parallel conversion, the old and new system both are run at full capacity for a given period. And this is considered a very safe strategy to implement a new system. Since the old system is still producing output in case there are major problems with the new system, but it's more expensive and time consuming than a direct changeover. Parallel means that two or more processes are executed concurrently. Why is it more expensive? Because they're still paying ADP, even though they're trying to initiate their own new payroll system. If they used a direct changeover on January 1st or for the first payroll of the year, they would stop paying ADP and they would just use their new system, but that would be more risky. Number 14, rather than use the internet, Costco uses a privately owned network for its electronic data interchange, EDI, when directly placing orders with vendors from the reorder information generated by its own ERP system. This wide area network is considered more secure and reliable than if Costco were to use the internet for such transmissions. And this describes a value added network, privately owned wide area network that provides reliable, high speed and secure transmission of data. While the internet can provide some of the same for free or far less cost, the value added network competes with the internet by providing their customers with security for data transmission. And they also provide EDI translation software, which if you remember EDI, electronic data interchange, we didn't do that in this sim, but EDI requires translation software to trade with your partners. And part of the value that the value added network provides is that translation software. Number 15, Expedia. 
needs to have the latest information available to its customers at all times so its system features interactive processing that allows the user to be in direct communication with the computer and get immediate processing immediate feedback on whether the transaction was accepted and this is a fancy way to describe online real time immediate processing is required if you want to have the latest information available at all times and the facts indicate that immediate processing feedback is important any type of interactive system like this must be online real time now I would suggest that you go over this sim again one more time maybe even tomorrow why because I presented it in an order where you could really learn it and get the most out of it but the exam's not going to do it that way so you're going to want to make sure that you still remember what all these terms mean in the list and that you can match them up with each numbered item I wish you a hopeful Christmas I wish you a brave new year all anguish pain and sadness leave your heart and let your road be clear